I'm Zoltan and today I want to show you my ultralight solar bike camper. So you can see it here attached to my solar border uh, uh, bike that I showed you in my last video. So the special thing about this uh, bike camper that it's like optimized to minimal weight. So it's just like the shape is just large enough uh, to fit in one person lying down. Uh, so you can I can open it here. So it's not not necessarily for people who are claustrophobic. Uh, so it fits in like a nice comfortable mattress. Uh, it's 60 centimeters times I think one meter 80 if I remember correctly, and seven centimeters thick. And. I built the whole uh, the whole trailer out of corrugated uh, plastic, so or coroplast. And uh, the special thing about the trailer is also that it's it only has one wheel at the at the rear. So this helps helps first to keep the weight down, but also helps tremendously because now you're on in line with the with the wheels of your bicycle. So if you have like a narrow road uh, or like a lot of potholes it's much easier to navigate uh, with a trailer and so the complete complete weight of the trailer including the solar panel but otherwise empty is 14 and a half kilograms without the solar panel the solar panel itself weighs together the cables weighs around two kilos so without solar it is 12 and a half kilograms uh, of weight so i think as as far as i know it's uh, world's lightest rigid body bike camper and so this solar panel is uh, connected in parallel with the solar panel uh, of my bike so both go into the solar charge controller right now we have a cloud so it doesn't charge much so it just shows you now it's around 10 10 watts like 53 uh, volts times 0 0.2 amps uh, so it charges it right now the, uh, I have two cables connecting the trailer. One is for the solar panel going to the solar charge controller. The other one is from the battery going to the rear for the power supply. So I have like here one small switch that I can push. And now you can see I have my rear lights at the back of the camper. Now switched on. And also I have power supply in the camper. So I have, uh, where is it now? I have here, uh, this is uh, 36 or in this case 40, uh, 48 volt battery directly from the uh, uh, power directly from the battery. So this I use, for instance, if I want to cook with my rice cooker, I can connect it here if I want to cook inside or close to the to the bike trailer. And then I have the 5 volts uh, USB uh, charging port for my phone or other uh, USB devices. So let me show you how I disconnect the trailer. So like the the... The most difficult part of the whole trailer was uh, the connection point. This is now the third iteration uh, I did. It's a bit tricky and also it's not yet completely perfect because like I think this part, like the rest of the trailer, all the trailer I did without a welding, I think this would be a, a place where welding and some steel would make sense to make it more rigid and reduce the, the wobbling. But it's still, it's still okay for me to, to go, so I already went on a larger trip with the bike trailer last year uh, around like 400 kilometers round trip and it worked quite well so you you pull these plugs these prevent uh, the connection points here to to get out when you when you travel and then you just pull the trailer like this and then the cable is long enough that it can stay connected and then usually I just put them back in to not lose them so these are made out of bicycle spokes
And then here in this small box, I have hidden the four small aluminium legs. So you just tilt it to the side and connect one. And then here the second one. And so I had initially I had the connection point here at the very end, but I found out that the aluminium frame, I will show you from the uh, from the bottom in a minute, the aluminium frame at the bottom was not rigid enough, so it would bend too much. That's why I moved uh, the rear legs from here to the front. I forgot one leg. So we can go to the other side. I perhaps show you just once the, the complete rear. So you can see here, this is the under construction. So it's made out of, I think it's uh, 20 millimeter uh, square aluminum tubes. So you have these two tubes that go back to the rear wheel and then two sides and then some across. We have the, the door, and so yeah. So like I said, so the the frame is all made out of aluminium, uh, just uh, screwed together. And then the the walls and the roof is made out of corrugated plastic, which I just. Uh, attached to the frame and to, to each other with zip ties. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. And also even like the, the uh, floor is out of the same material. So here I doubled it, but I actually, I only doubled it in the front part and I didn't double it in the rear. Uh, but actually you don't really need to double it because like the thing is that you don't really need that much of rigid floor but more like a tensile strength so you instead of thinking about a floor you mo you're more thinking about like a, uh, a hammock um, where you need like the tension if it's if there's enough tension the, the aluminum frame will will be sufficient um, yeah so that's how I how I was able to make it so lightweight and um, yeah I did some bamboo reinforcement inside because I found out like after a couple of months uh, the whole walls would sag a little bit so I did this reinforced frame so there's one here this uh, reversed U and then uh, here you also see another one and then on the roof to, to prevent the roof here from uh, going dipping down because of the large uh, door that I have here so if you want to go inside you go inside so it's for one person it's quite comfortable here you can also move uh, put your like luggage inside if you don't want to leave it outside when you're sleeping and here I have um, a window on the other side so if it's very hot uh, during the day I can open both sides and like I lock it just also with this bamboo uh, the the roof you know not the 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 door I lock with the same thing like with this bamboo so here you can just unlock it and then open the window like this so we have the next morning and I forgot to tell you three last things so one uh, I haven't mentioned so uh, as I told you uh, this is uh, corrugated plastic or coroplast but Coroplast is not UV durable for a long time, so it perhaps can last one or two years, maximum three, but then it will degrade because of the UV light. So what you want to do is to protect the outer layer. So here what I did is just use some aluminum tape, which reflects the light and also your UV light, 
and protects the plastic uh, below. The other option would be to paint it, uh, but because it's PP you have to use a primer before you paint it, otherwise it will, won't hold. Uh, and then the other thing is that um, what you can do if you want to travel with two persons, like with your, with your uh, um, partner or with your friend, you can build two of these trailers and what you can do is you basically mirror the the window and the the door so in this case here the the window is on this side and the large door is on the other side and what you can do is you just flip the sides when you build it and then when you when you want to camp you you park them uh, by each other and open the windows to each other so you basically have a window where where you can talk to while you uh, while you're laying down so that's a quite nice feature and the final thing is that in the very early morning hours or in the evening hours what you can do is you can basically lay both the bike if you have a solar bike and the trailer to the side and capture the the, the sun from the sh um, shallow angle and increase significantly your your solar production so right now it's already not too early so it's already 9 a.m. Uh, here in Berlin in August uh, so you, the, you will have an uh, even um, more significant Im impact if it's even earlier like 7 7 a.m. for instance but you can have a look so right now the solar produces from the two panels is close to 100 watts so 50 volts times 2 amps approximately and let me tilt it over in a moment. So now you see, I have laid them both down, the camper and the solar bike, uh, pointing to the sun. And you can have a look. So right now, this can't be read so well here, but it's basically it's 50 times three approximately, so 150, 160 watts right now. And like if it's uh, even earlier in the morning, like like I said, like seven, uh, seven a.m., the the impact will be even larger. Like the difference, like at seven a.m., if it's the uh, bike is uh, vertically, you will have very little power to charge. But like this, you will also get 150 or, or more, even at seven a.m., which is quite nice. So usually, when you go go on a tour, what you can do is when you wake up. Uh, you, when you have your breakfast, you lay them down like this for an hour or so, you recharge, then you go. During the day you can charge while they are both upright and then in the evening you can give a last charge by having a break of one or two hours, uh, laying them down and showing, uh, pointing to the, to the west. Yeah, that's it.